Hi, welcome to this series of Defeating Adventism, and I'm going to do something a little different in this video, and that is I'm going to show clips of another video on YouTube, and I'll show you the source, where I'm going to critique an Adventist teacher, and only part of his message. Um, there's, there's a lot that could be said in his message, and I don't want to make the video too long, so I'm going to hone in and select a few topics of this Adventist teacher. So it's going to be a critique of a well-known Adventist teacher in Australia named Alan Lindsay, who's given a presentation at Springwood Adventist Church. And I'm going to show you a screenshot of the video right here. So there it is on YouTube. You can see the source. You can search it. You can copy it. You can find it. You can watch it for yourself. But first, let's do this. Who's Alan Lindsay? Is he just the um, average SDA pastor out there laboring in the trenches who is somewhat obscure? And the answer is no. Let's look at his bio here. You can look at his bio and you see what? He's a lecturer for 30 years, Avondale College, 10 years director of the Ellen White Research Center. Well, that sounds good. He's a what well-known presenter of, it says what, Keepers of the Flame. It's a DVD series. And they show it on the Three Angels Broadcast Network and Hope TV. So, he is not some unknown, obscure Adventist out there laboring in the trenches. He's very well known, and I would say very well known in Australia. So, before we do this, we're, let's, we're going to look at his YouTube video. And I'm only going to look at the page, because I want you to look at it. So look at it here again for me. Again, here's that sc same screenshot. But look at the title of the video. It says what? How to read a 19th century prophet in the 21st century. The title alone already tells me this prominent Adventist does not understand the Bible. Where in the Bible does it tell us or encourage us or caution us to look at prophets from different centuries as if, well, we got to parse their words differently from prophets of former times? And the, and the bottom line is, it doesn't. So, spoiler alert, it's not there. Um, again, what we're going to have here is an Adventist who has to, I wish I had a dustpan and a broom, who's got to run behind little Ellen and clean up her messes that she makes all the time. Ellen White is known for her contradictions, and I'll say more about that in a minute. So this Adventist already is telling us just in the title without even looking at the video, we got some biblical issues here. Uh, in terms of how to examine prophets, he seems to be absolutely unaware how to examine prophets. So let me help him out here in just a second. But before we do, you're going to see here in this video that he and Adventist literature, which you'll see again later also, is going to try to make this distinction between when you read a prophetic message, we got to look at, well, it's application, is it general or not, and whether, well, it's principles to be followed you know, and, and how so, this whole application principles idea, which again, please show me that in the Bible because it's not there. We follow prophets because they're true. We admonish them because they are false. So without further ado, let me help Dr. Alan Lindsay and use the Bible and let's look at how it tells us to look at prophets. So let's go to Moses' time and let's jump way ahead and go to Jesus' time. Let's go to Deuteronomy 18. I'm just going to look at the underlying part. What's it say? Moses says what? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the word does not come to pass or come true, that's the word the Lord has not spoken. Well, that's how Moses told us to look. Look at what the prophet says. If they said something and if it doesn't come true, they're false. Don't be afraid of them. Okay, that's good. That's how you examine a prophet. Moses didn't say, hmm, examine their words and see if that's a general application or if that's a principle. No, it doesn't exist. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7. What does Jesus say? Look along with me here. I'm just going to read the top and the bottom. You can read the whole thing. Jesus says what? Beware of false prophets. And then at the bottom, he tells us how to beware of them because you're going to recognize them by their fruits. Jesus tells us to be fruit inspectors. That's how you examine prophets. We don't need to examine prophets by looking at them through centuries. Uh, Dr. Alan Lindsay's already starting off with a bad foot. But anyway, I guess that ought to be a given because he's an Adventist. And Adventists, as I frequently say, aren't Christian and do not understand the Bible. And Alan Lindsay's already demonstrating that for us. 
We're going to look at the first and second clip here, where he's going to establish the authority of Ellen White. I did cut the first and second clip and put them together because he has some commentary uh, in between where he's actually going to read her quote. So I want you to watch these first and second clips here now. Look at this interesting article. Now this came out in the Review and Herald, our church paper, in 1905. I have been instructed to say, now notice those words, I am the Lord's messenger sent to bear a message of reproof to the erring and encouragement to the meek and lowly. With pen and with voice I am to bear the messages given me. The word given me is, and here she's quoting the words of an angel, you are faithfully to reprove those who would mar the faith of the people of God. Write out the things which I shall give you, that they may stand as a witness till the end of time. Two points I want to make on that, that you just watched. One is, Ellen Wright's writings are what? What's it say? A witness uh, to the truth till the end of time? Nice. Very good. I mean, that's pretty authoritative there, right? So her writings are a witness of truth till the end of time. Final. There's, there's something else in her, in this statement, that, uh, that I just got to comment on. That Ellen White is what? Uh, been given the authority to reprove people? Like, she needs that authority? And first of all, like she has it? I'm sorry, not true. What is the authority for reproving people? It's the scripture. It's 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, reproof, and correction. It's scripture that's for reproof and correction. It's not you, Ellen White. It's scripture. So this angel that's talking to her is already, I think, um, again, what did Jesus say? By their fruits you will know them. I'm sorry, Ellen White, you're not vested with the authority of reproof. It's the scripture that's vested with the authority of reproof. Anyway, after this, he goes on in the video and talks about words changing after times. So he's setting us up because he's going to show us here something by Ellen White that he has to try to justify and reconcile. He's going to show us here in this third clip. I'm going to show you here in a minute. It's like two minutes long. It's an 1869 statement by Ellen White, where she's going to say, eggs, don't place them on your table, don't eat them. And then he's going to show us a letter from 1901, where Ellen White writes a letter to an ailing uh, Dr. Kress, telling him to eat eggs. Oh no, we got contradiction by Ellen White. Well, that's not news to me, but anyway, he's going to show that contradiction, and he's going to bring up some good points. Who do we believe? The 1869? Or the 1901? Or can they both be true? You know, he's going to kind of uh, do that. So let's watch this third clip. Understanding the meaning of inspired writings is also complicated if we fail to understand the context of what Ellen White is writing about. Now, let me give you an illustration. Look at this one. In 1869, Ellen White wrote to two parents saying, eggs should not be placed on your table. They are an injury to your children. Then, some years later in 1901, she wrote to a medical doctor and said this, get eggs of healthy fowls. Use these eggs cooked or raw, or cooked or raw, I should have left out a word there. Eggs contain properties which are remedial agencies in counteracting poisons. Now when you look at those two sentences, dear friends, there's a problem. What do you think the problem is? Well, yeah, there's a contradiction, very clearly. Why does she write to two parents in 1869, eggs should never be placed on, should not be placed on your table, they're an injury to your children, and yet she writes later on in 1901, get eggs from healthy fowls and drop them into grape juice, that's the whole quote, the quote eggs, and they contain properties which are remedial agencies and counteracting poisons. Now, we can draw several conclusions there, friends. We can say once, well, she's getting old, 1901, she's much older than 1869, she forgot what she wrote in 1869. Or you could say, well, she's a bit hypocritical and in one of those statements it's not right because they contradict each other. Why would she say to parents, don't put eggs on your table, to another person, get eggs and drop them into grape juice and drink the mixture? 
Or if we say Ellen White is an inspired messenger of God, which I believe she was, that she was inspired in writing to those two parents and she was inspired in writing to this medical doctor in 1901, well then, does the Holy Spirit inspiring her not know which of those statements is true? They can't both be true, or can they? Or can they? <coughs> Keep this one in mind. Because people say, well, how could the same person claiming to be an inspired messenger of God write two such contradictory statements? Which statement is the inspired counsel? Which one do we reject? That's a question that this raises. How do we understand a 19th century prophet in the 21st century? Well, isn't that interesting? So he, he poses this contradiction. He doesn't answer it, though, does he? He just throws it out there. Clearly, he does a decent job of clearly laying out the contradiction, but he doesn't answer the contradiction. But let me just say this. Ellen White is known, at least by me and, 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 and lots of others, that she, clear, she contradicts herself all the time. She's got prophetic contradictions where she contradicts her prophecies and she contradicts the Bible routinely. Look down in the show notes below. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a, a very well-known link. You can see all the many contradictions of Ellen White. So before examining, anyway, this contradiction by the prophet, let me just say this. A true prophet doesn't need any uh, guidelines. And that's what he's going to do here in this video. He's going to lay out guidelines. See, he set us up with the apparent contradiction. Oh, now we need guidelines for understanding the prophet. And before he even answers the contradiction, you know what? True prophets don't need guidelines. Matter of fact, they already got them. You already saw them in Deuteronomy 18 and Matthew chapter 7. There's your guidelines. So the a good portion of this Anna Lindsay video and the four guidelines, which I don't see four guidelines necessarily in the Bible, but I do see other guidelines, Deuteronomy 18, Matthew chapter 7, uh, test them, test these prophets. And we'll see whether they're true or not. And I'll just already tell you, Ellen White, uh, in her test of 1869 and eating no eggs, and then 1901 eating eggs is a false prophet. But anyway, I digress. Finally, he in this video, he does get to at least saying, why did she write no eggs? It's like, okay, well, good. This is, I'm optimistic now. He's actually going to tell us and actually going to reconcile us. I'm going to let you watch a clip. I want you to look at his slides. At the top of his slides, you're going to see this statement. Why did she write no eggs? Now, here's what I want you to remember. He never answers that question. It's on his slide. He doesn't answer it. He then just segues from the 1869 prophecy or the health reform message of eat no eggs to the 1901 letter of Dr. Crest that Ellen White is uh, is going to pen and just he moves on to this vision so look at this fourth clip with me now why did she write no eggs there's the statement eggs should not be placed on your table they are an injury to your children well in 1901 here's Dr. Cress in Australia dying from pernicious anemia and during uh, just during the year Ellen White over in California now was given a vision one night about Dr. Cress. So you already notice he had on his slides why did she say it he never answers why and he won't by the way and here's another spoiler alert in the entire video what he's going to do next for us he's going to show this 1901 letter allowing and even encouraging the use of eggs, clearly a contradiction to the 1869 um, health reform uh, message. So let's look at this letter, and then we're going to kind of go quickly into We're going to look at the bottom of the letter. But anyway, let's watch this fifth clip where he shows us this letter. And she writes him a letter. And I want you to notice what the letter said, or at least portion of it. Do not go to extremes in regard to health reform. Get eggs of healthy fowls, use these eggs cooked or raw, drop them uncooked into the best unfermented wine you can find. This will supply that which is necessary for your system. Do not for a moment suppose that it will not be right for you to do this. I say that milk and eggs should be included in your diet. You are in danger of taking too radical a view of health reform and of prescribing for yourself a diet that will not sustain you. Eggs contain properties 
which are remedial agencies in counteracting poisons. And again, he still does not reconcile what he set up in the beginning of this contradictory 1869 statement and the, now this 1901 statement where clearly Ellen White is saying, Dr. Crest, use these eggs, eat these eggs, they're good for you, etc. What he does now in this next video clip is he's going to make a general statement about the letter and how it's how, how Ellen White finishes it off or, or signs out on this vision. I think unstated, he is going to make an, an assumption, the audience, that we have a specific vision given to Dr. Kress, allowing him to eat eggs. Again, it still doesn't reconcile the 1869, but he says, and he's going to show Ellen White in this letter clearly saying, it's okay to eat eggs. So let's watch him in this sixth clip as he talks about how Ellen White signed off on this uh, vision at the very end. Now, I had read some time before that at the end of that letter to Dr. Cress, Ellen White had done something that she very rarely did. And I thought, well, now that I was director down there, I had access to all of her writings, I would go to letter 37, 37, 1901, and see whether that was true. And sure enough, at the end of that interesting letter, Ellen White had written in her own handwriting. Now, normally she went, sent the letter that she had written in her handwriting across to a secretary. The secretary had typed it out. It came back to her. She merely put her signature at the end, Ellen White, and that was it. But this time, she wrote this. This that I now send you was opened distinctly before me last night. All right, so you just watched that clip. So now you've seen the letter, and you've seen where Ellen White said, this is a vision given to you, Dr. Kress. Still, we don't have Alan Lindsay, Adventist teacher, lecturer 30 years at Avondale College, ever reconciling the false statement by Ellen White in 1869 and this new direction in 1901. He still can't reconcile these statements. His argument, though, does seem to be that this 1901 uh, was a specific prophecy, uh, vision, let me say, given to Dr. Kress. And indeed, if you just read the letter, you'll say, yeah, that's exactly what it is. But he still doesn't reconcile them. So let me, because you know what he can't. Let me say this. Alan Lindsay is very typical of Seventh-day Adventist teachers. They're shallow and they're void of any uh, freedom of thought. Because as an Adventist, you cannot have freedom of thought. You have to stick with the Adventist line. I'm going to show you here, uh, you know, in this video, we're going to uh, show testimonies from the church. I got volumes two and volume five here. Of, this is, you know, just two volumes of my nine volume set. Uh, what Alan Lindsay does not show you, on, at least in total, on the screen. He kind of acts like he is the grand researcher here, oh, look what I found, I'm presenting this to my audience, uh, you know, I've got the, the pedigree of this, I'm the 30-year lecturer at the Avondale College, and I study Adventism, you know, in the Adventist Research Institute we saw in his bio, but you know what, he's not presenting anything new. He only, he's only allowed to, as an Adventist, present that which is already known, because you can't deviate from Adventism if you're an Adventist. And again, Adventist, even celebrity Adventists like Alan Lindsay and Doug Batchelor, etc., um, are just parrots. They're just birds that repeat what they've already heard from Adventist literature. Let's look at the official egg answer in the book itself. So what you see here is Testimony from the Church, Volume 2, which I just held up in my hand. The testimony itself actually begins on page 390, and there it is. Now, here is the actual words in question. Ellen White said, what, eggs should not be placed upon your table. Asterisk, you didn't see that in Alan Lindsay's presentation, did you? An asterisk, and oh, oh, look at the bottom of the page, it says what? See appendix. Well, this ought to be interesting. Let's go look at the appendix. What's the appendix say? The admonition in the personal testimony addressed to brother and sister E that eggs should not be placed upon your table, has by some been given a general, oh, there it is, general application. Then she goes on to say, or the appendix, that is, that this was not intended as a general teaching for families of normal circumstances. is made clear not only by the setting of the statement itself, 
or we can say the testimony, but also by no less than three specific, specific sorry, utterances published you know, by Ellen White. Uh, in other words, three more contradictions, I, I'm assuming. But then look what else is underlined about sensual habits. I'm, I'm not going to get into sensual habits because I'm not going to get this get sexual in this video. But Ellen White and Dr. Kellogg and his plain facts uh, got into um, sexual matters, let me just say. And Ellen White, I think, was influenced by Dr. Kellogg's and his thought of uh, sensual um, habits of children and the animal desires that I'm not going to get into in, in this video. So the So the... The Adventist answer is what? Oh, people took it as a general application when they should not have. See, there it is. Alan Lindsay does not have an original thought in his head because he can't. He has to stick with the Adventist line. But is it true that this testimony itself should not be given general application? Is it true that this testimony was just given to Sister E for to, um, to retard, to tone down the sensuality that she was dealing with? Look at page 399 in this testimony. Ellen White makes an appeal to what? She says, you, this is Sister E, you have not regarded the light that the Lord has given you upon the health reform. There it is right there. Ellen White just made an appeal in this testimony to the health reform message. And then she talks about health reform one page later, don't place eggs on your table. Nowhere in this testimony is she saying, Sister E, this is a testimony for you and you only. No, Ellen White makes an appeal to her health reform message and then gives guidance related to health reform on the very next page, and that's don't eat eggs. Alan Lindsay, you never reconciled the don't eat eggs in 1869 to Sister E and the 1901 Dr. Crest letter where it says eat eggs still waiting for that reconciliation. So, what about this principles and application distinction that you kind of saw introduced here in the appendix? You know, Ellen White's clear about her writings. That doesn't exist. There is no principles and application. Look with me here. Testimonies, Volume 5, there it is. Page 67 of Volume 5, Ellen White says, what about her writings? In these letters which I write, in the testimonies, and we just read testimony volume two. I am presenting to you that which the Lord has presented to me. I do not write one article in the paper expressing merely my own ideas. They are what God has opened before me in vision, the precious rays of light shining upon the throne, period. This whole idea of applications and, um, and principles, it's a modern invention by modern Adventists who are trying to clean up with a little dustpan and broom behind Ellen as she's Ellen is running around making messes all over the place. No, Ellen White believed, as you just read, she says, I am not giving you my ideas. These things that I write, they come from God. Go back and read Testimonies, Volume 5, page 67 again. So this applications principle thing doesn't exist. Only exist in modern Adventism trying to clean up after Ellen. Last clip, one other thought before we wrap this up. And that is Ellen White in, in her further correspondence to Dr. Kress, and you're going to see in this clip, says, you know, but but yeah, Dr. Kress, you can eat eggs now, but the time's coming when it's not going to be safe to eat eggs and cream and milk and drink milk, etc. So let's watch this seventh clip. The time will come, Dr. Kress, when milk cannot be used as freely as it is now in 1901 used. Notice what she's saying. The time will come when we may have to discard some of the articles of diet we now use, such as milk and cream and eggs. The time may come in the future. But my message is that you, Dr. Cress, must not bring to yourself a time of trouble beforehand. But I wish to say that when the time comes that it is no longer safe, not sinful, but no longer safe to use milk, cream, butter and eggs, God will reveal this to his people. An interesting statement. So isn't that interesting? So the time's going to come 
and the Lord's going to make it known to us. Let me just recap here. Get your 28 beliefs books out at Venice. Ellen White is what? The spirit of prophecy. Ellen White just did what? She just made a prophecy. Telling us that the time's going to come when these food items will no longer be safe. But, but, but God's going to tell us when it's no longer safe. But wait. Ellen White is dead. She died in 1915. It's been now 120 plus years, 121 years, since she wrote that prophecy. But didn't she say that the Lord's going to let us know when it's unsafe? How are we to know now? The spirit of prophecy is dead. I didn't read in my 28 beliefs book where we're going to have another spirit of prophecy. We're going to have spirit of prophecy number two, follow spirit of prophecy number one, so that when those prophecies were given, like this one, where the where God said something's going to happen in the future, and then he's going to let us know that we have a prophet to let us know. I don't see that in your books. So you know what I can, what I can conclude at this point? Ellen White is a false prophet because she died, and she is no longer here to give the prophecy that milk and cream and eggs are now no longer safe. It can happen. She is dead. Another evidence of a false prophet. Ellen White is indeed a false prophet. Ellen White, that's a false prophet. I see this in other false religions, by the way, in, in my library here. I often say, welcome to my room of nonsense, because what you can't see is I'm circled around books uh, written by lots of false prophets, and Adventism is just one. But you know, the, the leader, the false prophet of, of religion, spawns other false teachers. Alan Lindsay is just one of these false teachers who's always trying to clean up after his false prophet and contradictions, which are many. Look at this last slide here with me now. Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons, to the insincerity of liars of con whose consciences are seared, who forbid marriage and require abstinence from foods, eggs, that God created to be received with thanksgiving, by those who receive and know the truth. For everything created eggs by God is good and nothing is to be rejected if it's received with thanksgiving for it's made holy by the word of God and prayer. Alan Lindsay is clearly unaware of one the test of a prophet showed you that in Deuteronomy 18 showed you in Matthew chapter 7. We don't need this false distinction of a 19th century prophet or a 15th century prophet or a or a, you know, first century prophet. No, the Bible already tells us how to test prophets. Alan Lindsay is a false teacher for telling us, well, you got to look at these prophetic words and parse them closely, applications and principles. Show me where the Bible says we test prophets by applications and principles. No, that's an Alan Lindsay teaching. It's an Alan Lindsay teaching because he's got to try to clean up after his false prophet, Ellen White clearly does not exist in the Bible. Alan Lindsay is marked himself as a false prophet for not following the word of God and calling out Ellen White as a teacher of doctrines of demons for abstaining from food. Therefore, Alan Lindsay is a false teacher.